What's going on friends? It's TJ, another episode of THC and NFTs. Today we're back on another smoke break and we're going to talk a little bit about our digital security. Before we get into that, you could try to play but you're never going to be me. But the other way what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody and stain from the people who deceive me. Bloody ends break through the chains, go free me. Looking for change, looking for pain. Pulling a mob, pushing a train. I'll never stop, stick to a lane. Pick up the right, well, and go I hope y'all enjoyed the intro, but we're here to talk today about digital security. The digital security we're going to talk about is, you know, the transactions and the interactions with our MetaMask and social media accounts. Twitter has been going crazy with scams. And this is nothing new. Um, people have been scamming people since scamming, pre-scamming was invented. Bad people doing bad things will always be around, unfortunately. There's nothing we can really do to stop that. We can minimize their success by educating others and helping others when they run into a potential scam. For instance, on Twitter, there's always, 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 always someone who sets up a Twitter account, even possibly goes as far as a Discord account too, and they'll go and be like, Mint is live, quick, a uh, stealth mint, or stealth drop, or, or even though our project sold out, we felt bad that not everybody could get in, so we're gonna add an extra thousand to the collection. Now, a lot of red flags, you know, are thrown out when these tweets are put out, you know? And, and the biggest one that you need to look for, is if the tweet has anything to do or suggests, you know, hurry up and hurry up and mint, you know, uh, hurry up and do something. If you don't do this, you're gonna miss out. And what these scammers are capitalizing on is FOMO. There was an imaginary one today, for example, that uh, they try to get me. It said imaginary ones minting now. Uh, here, here's mint link. Um, I clicked mint link to see what was going on. Uh, I want. I, I always click make links to see, you know, just to see what it is. I, I don't authorize my wallet unless I'm ever, unless I'm minting a project. And I don't FOMO in off projects anymore. I've learned. Um, when I do FOMO, I mean, I'm not saying I, I don't FOMO. I don't FOMO in on projects that I don't know. I do FOMO in on projects when it's a slow burn and I've been holding back on minting and I see they're about to mint out. And yeah, maybe I, I jump right in, you know, and I don't even look at floor or look at what's going on in the Discord at the time. But that's that's a different type of FOMO. The FOMO I'm talking about is when you see these huge <sighs> projects with 100,000 uh, K followers, you know, and, and they're verified on Twitter. They got their little blue check and they're offering you a way to mint after either mint's closed or after sellout or pre-mint, you want a raffle to, uh, to mint. And I actually got one of these from a legit project and I didn't believe it because I didn't do anything to get one and I wasn't really quite a fan of it, to be honest. I did not participate in any whitelist raffle or anything like that. I, I was a part of uh, Wild Goat Gang pre-season one, pre-first mint and I didn't get in on it and I was okay. And I, I, I just sat back and watched their ride. And that didn't mean I had anything against their project, but it kind of tasted salty when they shilled my inbox with a whitelist. And it looked exactly like all the other scams. Like quick whitelist running out, uh, fill out Google form to uh, reserve your spot or quick uh, mint live. But I got a, I got a whitelist Google form fill and I even sent uh, uh, a tweet so I, I, I was just curious like is this legit and they responded back yes it is and then I got a follow-up tweet the other day um so did you uh, register for whitelist yet and I, I don't get it because their discord shows you know that they have a bunch of people and their Twitter shows that they have a bunch of people why are they shilling me I, I I am not the community member that they want because I don't care about that project so I don't understand you know where they're going and it wasn't even a scam but Twitter is blowing up with scams everywhere because of the fact that NFTs are exciting. There's quick gains to be made, you know. Some of these NFTs will drop to zero. We're going to get rugged. The project's going to fail. The owner's not going to follow through with what they say. Whatever happens, it's going to happen. But these scammers are seeing this as, 
as an opportunity, as a way pocket our money, you know, by making, by using FOMO on us. And they understand, they really do understand the whole concept of FOMO and how to really get y'all. Because they're not just doing it with projects that have like 2,000 followers or a brand new project that just opened on Twitter. No, they're doing it with big name, you know, featured product projects who have big fl uh, floor prices. And the reason why these people are falling for it is because, yeah, you know, who wouldn't want to get an opportunity to mint a doodles at mint price today and have it be valued at what floor price is right now? You know, yeah, that's life changing, but you're FOMOing in. You need a, I mean, most of the time, if you just click the comments in the Twitter, you'll see it's a scam. It's a scam. Don't fall for it. There's multiple comments, multiple people trying to warn you about it. I always, you know, go and report. I retweet before I report. I retweet for a few minutes, let people see that this is a scam. Another one I got hit with the other day was a Coinbase one. And this, I was, I was, I was completely floored. Because it was Coinbase. Yeah, they showed me on Twitter. And, and it, it, it was, it, it was bizarre. But it took me to a Google Doc. And in this Google Doc, <coughs> It asked for my seed phrase. Now, if there's one thing we can touch on that will cover all bases to protect you the most is never give out your seed phrase. There's no reason why anyone should ever need your seed phrase but you unless it's in the last will or, you know, you're, you're giving, you're completely done with NFTs, you want nothing to do with it, and you're just giving the wallet to someone else. That is the only time... I think you should ever give up your seed phrase to anyone. My wife don't even know mine. <laughs> so you need to be careful with these scams. You need to realize what they're trying to do. You know, when you're interacting with a, another website and you're connecting your wallet or you're doing a collab, a, a collab join, you know, on Discord and you're trying to verify your assets, make sure you're using the proper links. These are where people get you never trust dms in discord uh, too many people get their wallet completely drained because they do not follow the simple steps of turning off your dms do not allow there, there's no reason you don't need a direct message from people you do not know i have my friends turned off i have my dms turned off if you want to be my friend on discord and you find me in a server and we chat it up and I like you and you asked to be my friend, you know, I will add you. I have no problem. I have a bunch of people in my dis in, in my friends list. I add constantly. I love community. Not saying that I might not fall for a scam in the future because they're getting better and better every day and it's scary. I just want everyone to be safe. I want everyone to be, you know, excited to be in this space. And if you end up losing money, I want you to lose money because you did your research, you you worked into the community, you, you built something, and the project just failed because it just failed. There, and that happens sometimes. I wish nobody ill success. I wish we all succeed, you know, hashtag wog me. But that's not always the case, and some of us, majority of us, I think all of us, will experience a rug, a project going to zero, or the founders just over promising and under delivering. And th that right there is also unacceptable, you know? We need to we need to over promise and over deliver. We, we we need to step it up, you know. But that's another episode for another day. Make sure you're checking your transactions with your wallet when you're interacting with another website. A lot of the times it'll say in, in the message, you know, these are the ones that I, I feel comfortable, you know, clicking when I'm uh, giving authorization to my wallet. Clicking or signing this uh, transaction or signing this message does not authorize any transaction to, t uh, to withdraw or take or it pretty much says that they will not take anything from your wallet. It, you do not give permission for them to take anything from your wallet. There's another transaction where you, you, you are giving permission uh, to, uh, to take 
out of your wallet and and you just gotta make sure you're reading what you're signing. This this is this is your pin code essentially. It's your, it's, it's also your signature, and you need to write, read what you're signing. The, they make it short and sweet for a reason, and it is to keep us safe. If not, they would do what every other big corporation does and gives us 20, 30 pages of terms and conditions. So hopefully we don't read everything and find things that we don't jive with because they want us to sign our life away. They want to own us. And that's what these scammers want too. They want to own our wallets. They want, they want to drain our pockets. They want to make money off our misery. And that is not a vibe for me at all. So please, my friends, stay safe in the space. Read what you're signing. Look into the comments of the Twitters. You know, if a huge project is doing a second drop and it's nine hours in and only 50 people have minted out of however many numbers they minted, if it was a real big project, the mint would have sold out. There's a lot of big red flags and you need to look for them. And if you don't know, your best bet is not to hop in. Ask someone who does and there's plenty of people here in this space that are more than happy to help and chime in. Don't FOMO. Uh, you can always ask me. You can hit me up on any of my social medias and I am more than willing to chat. I love talking with new people and helping them adapt to the space or educating or being educated. I do not know it all nor am I anywhere close to knowing anything. I spend a lot of hours researching and I get in trouble constantly at work for it. I am addicted to the space, to the community. I am addicted to minting. And I mean, in my OpenSea bag, I only got 40, but I got, I got Vive, I got OpenSea, I got Nifty, I got Solana. I got, I, I, I am all over the map. I got NFL all day. I got Top Shot. I got Flow, you know, I got Rally. I got ADHD. Well, I love the space. I love the creators and I want to be in here, you know, so I'm trying to jump into this space by help educate and maybe bring some more people in and keep them safe while we're at it. So there was actually one more piece I really wanted to touch on. And this was because I was listening to Brian Fanzo's, uh, one of his older episodes and his talks on digital security. And, and he makes a really, really key point that I wanted to, uh, bring into this episode. And that's having uh, multiple wallets and multiple passwords. Um, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And if you only got one chain in your link, and if that one chain is your one password that you use for all your accounts, social medias, MetaMask wallets, etc., you're only as strong as that one password. And he likes to say, um, uh, have multiple, or what, what, what does he say? He says points of entry or something along having multiple barriers, you know, multiple walls that can stop an intruder or if they do manage to access one of your accounts, you can minimize the loss by having your accounts diversified. And, and it, it is very smart and it is very true. I do hold two wallets myself. Um, I have one wallet that I, I hold only a couple NFTs in and the two NFTs that uh, I do not want to lose and I don't ever connect this wallet to any account online or do any transactions with anything other than uh, my wallet that I use for minting. That's the only wallet that I ever give access to or I, I interact with. And the one thing I don't have yet is a cold storage. And I'm not saying cold storage is the end all of security. It does not prevent you from being scammed or getting uh, your NFTs taken. But it does add an extra barrier and an extra chain to the leak. So any way you can extend, you know, your chains into your link to make your security stronger, I highly recommend doing that. I mean, it, it, it will be annoying at first, you know, if you are one of those people like me who had one password for everything, but is learning that that is a huge flaw in security. And that was a, like a web one type thing, you know, and I need a, I needed to step up my security. So I highly recommend if you don't already have one, create another wallet that will be your secure wallet that you only interact with yourself. And that might give you a little sense of security. 
So before we end this episode, real quick, I want to give a shout out to all you. Thank you all for, you know, all the comments, all the love. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I'm always giving away crypto, NFTs, whitelists, and I actually have some more whitelists uh, to give away. Um, the project is called Baked Bees, and we're going to have a whole episode on baked bees coming up in about a day or two. We're going to dive deep into their white paper, deep into the roadmap. We're going to show you some of their art, and we're going to see what we jive with. So until then, my friends, stay safe in the space. Be blessed, hashtag wog me, and until next time, peace out.